Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So today we're going to be talking about how to modify your stock CX20 controller, Cherson CX20 controller, uh, to be able to get that three mile range I've been able to obtain uh, with adding a two watt booster. And also we'll talk about uh, switching around some of the pots so you can actually have better control of your, your gimbal camera. A lot of people have been asking for this mod and I figure it's a good idea to make a video just so everybody kind of knows um, how to do it. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is open up the transmitter itself. So once you open the controller up, you're going to see all the insides here. Just be careful of pulling on wires and stuff. What I'd recommend doing is disconnecting this, um, the lead that goes from your battery compartment into the actual controller board. Just remember it's the connector on the left side as you have it open like this. Okay, so once you have it open, looking at the insides of how I have this done, the actual amplifier, the 2 watt amp, comes with its own antenna. It comes with its own antenna extension wire, as you can see here, its own uh, lock nuts, and this little length of extension wire here that you're going to be soldering onto the antenna board itself. As we zoom in here, you can see where I've soldered it into the board. It's basically just a mini coax cable. and you do this by basically unsoldering uh, the old antenna. It's just the uh, the old, um, I think it's a 3 dB gain antenna. And you're just basically unsoldering the shielding here onto this, this glob of solder. And then the center conductor goes here onto this portion. So you'll see it when you take off the old antenna. Just take note on how it's soldered on there. Um, Mine had this real uh, kind of hard silicone paint to kind of guard everything and hold it in, into place. So you're probably going to have to scrape that off. Uh, what, what, I, what actually worked for me was taking my soldering iron, the side of my soldering iron, and just kind of heating that up and then scraping it off just to get to the solder points. So once you get to that, all you're going to want to do is solder in the same manner as the stock one was connected and route your cable up in this direction. And what I did is drill the hole um, just to fit the, the coaxial connector kind of snug and comfortably in here. You run your coaxial connector through the top and then the actual amplifier will just screw right onto that. Snug down these nuts. I put just a tad of super glue on here because it was kind of twisting and moving a little bit so I just put a dot of super glue just to hold it a little bit. Um, so when you're flying, you don't have this thing unscrewing by accident. And you can always break this bond if you really need to get in there. And then, of course, you've got this. This is the stock kind of retainer clip for the top. And what I did is just basically uh, cut a little notch in it just so it's, it kind of hugged that um, the antenna connectors nicely. And you're able to kind of slip it on and off. Without doing this, it's kind of hard to get it on and off. So I just put a little notch in here just like that. Okay, while I had this thing open, I went ahead and took out the number auxiliary 2 dial. So I just unscrewed it, took it out of here. It's fairly simple. You just basically pop off the knob with it has an Allen screw here. So you just unscrew that. And then uh, it's got one of these little kind of collar nuts, kind of like the, um, the antenna connector has. You just loosen that collar nut, pop it out, and then I went ahead and just drilled a hole around the same size on the uh, corner here so I have better pitch control while controlling the, the aircraft with my finger. And then what this is, is this is just a, a gimbal dampener that I kind of repurposed for this. Here it gives a little more grip with your finger. These knobs are a little bit slippery, so it's a little harder to control. So this gives you a little bit better feedback while you're, um, you're flying and tilting. 
And also while I had this open, I went ahead and hot glued everything. Um, some people were having trouble with uh, wires coming loose in the stock transmitter. So I went ahead and just went through all the solder points and got a glob of hot glue on there just to kind of keep everything, keep all the wires from pulling off um, unnecessarily and then having loss of control in the air. Uh, just be careful in situations like if you are going to do this, this hot glue thing I've done here, just be careful. Um, I found out after the fact that me hot gluing this in actually limited the, uh, the response. So I had to kind of shave these back down a little bit to make sure that um, these globs of hot glue I put on these wires weren't hindering the, the full movement of the controls. So just keep that in mind. This solder, just be very careful here. I also put some hot glue over this just to hold everything in. It is a very small wire and a very small soldering area. So putting a glob of hot glue on here just to hold the wire in place is a very good idea. Routing it up here. And then from the power, basically the power just comes out of the, uh, the amplifier. And all I've done is uh, to get that 6 volts for the amplifier, this is rated at 6 volts max, is I put in a BEC. Now I got this from the, the I think it was eBay or Gearbest. I'll put the, um, the link in the description. But this is switchable from, I believe, 5 volts to 6 volts. So at first I tried the, vi the 5 volt. You can actually switch it from this jumper here. This would be the 6 volt setting and then the two outer ones would be the 5 volt setting. I tried the 5 volt setting at first and I wasn't getting much more range than I was originally getting. Uh, so I went ahead and popped it up to uh, 6 volts and that seemed to solve the problem along with putting on this windsurfer antenna. Now you can just make this, you can get the plans for this off the internet and I'll have the link in the description of where I where I made this uh, parabolic antenna dish to also extend the range. So in conjunction with that dish and also this um, BEC to regulate the voltage, you can run anything you have lying around the house, like say uh, this is a 7.4 volt LiPo battery connected with, with uh, dual lock. So this works really well. This one's a little big, but you can put whatever size you want. And then I just made an adapter from Dean's connector to a uh, JST connector. The way this is wired up, I don't know if you saw me taking it apart, the battery itself, the LiPo battery, would plug into the input port, the side of the BEC that has the jumper, that's the input side. So you would just basically plug the battery into that. And then this is the output side, which also comes with this uh, ferret ring, magnetic ring. And to hold this in place, I just hot glued it in there. Just, uh, you know, clean up the um, surfaces and so the hot glue will stick really good. And just I just put some hot glue on there, but you could probably use any kind of glue you wanted. So the output side is just basically staying inside of the controller, as is the connector from the 2 watt booster here. Those are both plugged in together and so the only cable I have sticking out is the input voltage input from the the power input from the LiPo battery sticking out the top. And that's basically it. So with this with this install um, I'm able to get the three miles of range, uh, line of sight range, with um, you know in like a uh, unpopulated area where there's no not too much RF interference from routers and other kinds of you know electrical magnetic fields uh, so if you do this you will get that range in, in a unpopulated area so just keep in mind that doing this you won't gain much range in a highly populated area just because there's there's just too much interference um, unless your your area, I don't know, has um, a different frequency or something. But with this 2.4 gigahertz frequency on the controller, uh, just keep that in mind. It's not going to be the best in a highly populated area. Anyway, I uh, hope this helps. And of course, putting it back together, just put it in the opposite direction, opposite way you took it apart. 
make sure all your connections are correct double check your polarities always double check polarities triple check your polarities before putting everything back together and you should be golden so anyway i hope this helps you guys and if you'd like to see the cx20 Cheerson cx20 in action using this setup go ahead and check out my channel for a bunch of other videos i have of the cx20 flying long range and also some some great uh videography please like subscribe and comment if you have any questions and i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching